Hi guys and welcome to Nick's Home Renovation. I am now on Instagram, you can find me under 1936 Bungalow Renovation. That's where I'm working on a bungalow I've reached, recently purchased. I only ever had one owner since 1936 and we're waiting for all sorts to happen there. So um, I'm currently waiting for planning permission to extend hopefully in the back side and loft. And whilst I'm waiting for that planning permission, I'm currently in the room I'm in now, renovating this old oak kitchen that is being turned into a modern shaker. So we're renovating the whole kitchen. Everything's going, it's got sort of fake beams, fake old units, table, chairs, um, everything's coming out. So I'll take you for a little walk around and um, you can let me know what you think. I'll start at this end. So at this end, you've got sort of a little Bit as you walk in, that's the kitchen door from the hall. And then you've got this dresser bit on the left. And this bit on the right with the back door going there and a window to the side of the house. So here's a little CAD drawing of what's happening over here. Pretty similar, like for like. So in this cupboard is going to be a boiler. There's currently a boiler in there, but we're going to put a new one. You can just see it at the back there, hidden. And we're also going to put this water softener, or get a new water softener, and put that in the same cupboard as the boiler to give more room here for two cupboards. Over on this left-hand side, this dresser is going, and we're going to have three units two reduced depth like you see here on the left and the right and one fridge freezer in the middle. Um, we didn't want to bring everything out to this depth because it just infringes on this path walking here to the rest of the kitchen. So the two reduced depth units will go either side of the fridge freezer in the middle to give us just a bit more room walking through here. As I turn around you've got a utility room in here with a washing machine and a tumble dryer. This room's pretty much staying the same. We're just gonna plaster it and then sort out issues like this for temporary fixes um, for the extraction in this room. So everything you see is going. So this old doorway, all the brickwork around the doors. You've got these beams everywhere which are just hollow. You can hear, they're all going. We're redoing the electrics. And this sort of door is going as well. And the floor. So it's all really nice, really good quality, but it was installed in 1992. And it's showing its age a bit, so the owner wants to bring it up to scratch. So coming over to this section. So quickly show you the cat drawing. Pretty similar again. Only difference over here is this is actually stub work. So I think the reason they did that was to sort of make this a bit of a feature over here. So we're gonna get rid of that because it gives us an extra bit of room and we can actually squeeze in another wall units and bigger base units down here, giving us a bit more room. And we can just use end panels to create that effect like they have there. So like for like again, so but this is just going to be a fridge because we've got the big freezer in that half of the kitchen. So this is just going to be a fridge in here. And then over here, we're going to have a single oven and a microwave unit with some more storage above it. And that will take the microwave out of there as well, which is quite nice. And then pretty similar here, symmetrical units either side of a, a, a pan drawer there with some wall units there, but we're not going to have this big one here so give you a bit more room across the, the uh, worktop there. <clears throat> the sink units so you've got this lovely view into this beautiful garden out here hopefully you can see it properly but the sink is kind of in a funny position the sinks to the right and it just didn't make sense to us so we're going to move this sink into the middle here of this pillar giving you so you can look out either side. Um, the dishwasher slightly moving over to the left and that's a bin and that's moving over there. So just neatening all that section up should be a lot nicer. 
and then this breakfast bar the client said is just a little bit too small so what we're going to do see from this drawing just make it a little bit further out here because we're going to gain a little bit of space because this built-in bit they also brought it out 10 centimeters or so so this will be 10 centimeters or so further back so we're going to still 10 centimeters of worktop space here and then we're going to get reduced depth units to bring out another 30 centimeters here reduced depth units are essentially just wall units with feet on and then that will give us a much nicer sort of maybe 900 mil by one and a bit meters over there so it's a much nicer section over there this is what we're going to have so it's a dove gray shaker and it's in frame as well which basically means this little detailing in here so i think it's really nice i think the client I'm not sure about the handles yet, but we're definitely having cups on all the drawers and knobs elsewhere, but I'm not actually sure what they've decided yet. And I think it's gonna really change the look of this kitchen and bring it up to the 2020 standards. Here's a quick look at the floors and all this is going. And these beams and the lights and everything's going from this table, chairs, bench. So it's really gonna look changed. I mean, it's a really nice kitchen. It's got really nice detail, but the client said it was installed in 1992. So I think it's time for a change. So over the next few weeks, I'll be ripping this out. Um, I'm gonna sell it on eBay because it's a really high quality kitchen. So I think I'll easily be able to sell it. I think this was in excess of you know 20,000 back in the 90s. And it's really held up well. Um, so what I'll do because of COVID times, I'll take this down myself um, and then clean it all up and get someone, if they someone buys it, to pick it up. Um, and then I'll be ripping it out, rewiring it, um, and then we'll get guys in to plaster the whole room because I'm sure there's going to be lots of damage removing these beams and the lights and the doors and everything. Um, and we'll get the plumber in to renew the boiler, do any sink work, any alterations, and then obviously get the kitchen fitted. So. Not a great time to get lose your kitchen with Christmas coming up, but the client wants to move forward, so it's, it's time to go, and I'm really excited for this one. Thanks again for everyone for watching and subscribing. As I mentioned in the video, um, the Readly app, really recommend it. Um, and I'm also now on Instagram, 1936 Bungalow Renovation, for day-to-day -day photos and videos of my work. Thanks, guys. Cheers.
Hi guys, and welcome to Nick's Home Renovation. I am at my kitchen renovation that I've recently completed. In this video, you'll see the before, um, a time lapse of all the work that's happened here, um, which is pretty much renewing everything. So ripping out um, a really beautiful, but really old 1992 oak kitchen and replacing it with this modern in-frame kitchen behind me. Um, I'll do a quick tour and then I'll run through everything we've done, um, all of the prices we've paid and where we've bought everything so you can replicate it at home if you like anything. I'll start with a quick scroll around the kitchen. So the kitchen's in two parts. We've got this end section here. small utility room behind this door here and then another section up there so I'll do a quick tour first Then you have this middle section with the table and radiator and then just a small section here where the boiler is which I'll show you in a minute a freezer and just a little start to the kitchen so I'll start with the kitchen itself um, it's from DIY kitchens and it is called the Helmsley Dove Grey and it's an in-frame kitchen. So the in-frame bit, it's basically this bit around the edge here, just that little bit of detailing. So a traditional shaker, it's just this standard bit, but the in-frame bit, it's just, just that little bit of detailing. And it's the same with the plimps and pell mix as well, just that tiny bit of detail. So, from DIY Kitchens, I've used them many times before, as you guys have probably seen in my videos. I think they're really good. Um, a little bit cheaper than anywhere else as well. The units came to £9,000, which sounds a lot, but we've actually got six tall larder units and lots of end panels, which is where a lot of the money goes. So these are the end panels here. So we've got these two units, two end panels either side. You can actually sometimes have them in the middle there as well, but we didn't need to have them there. And then we've also got three big units here with one, two, three, four end panels, and then this boiler cupboard with five, number five end panel here. So, seven end panels and tall units is where a lot of that nine thousand pounds goes but um the kitchen's fantastic and another reason why it is a little bit more expensive is there are lots and lots of drawers drawers are always going to be more expensive than just a standard cupboard for obvious reasons and we've got big pan drawers here drawers either side of the space here and here some down by the start of the kitchen as well and then we've got cool features such as a bin store and things like that hidden in that you can't see so those are all the little things that add up um, to quite a lot on that front next is the worktop so i bought that from a company called stone for life they're based in erith which is in kent um, it's a 30 mil quartz worktop so this is 30 mil this depth here so you can get 20 mil as well but we went for the slightly bigger option of 30 mil and it was 2600 pounds which i thought was a really good price considering we've got all of this breakfast bar which is a huge size about 900 by one and a bit meters um, all of this upstand which goes the whole way around the kitchen all of this splashback is quartz as well behind here so that's a really good long-term solution when you're cooking that you can just clean that right away 
and then it goes all the way into these lovely windows as well, which is really cool. The windows are at such a nice height. We took it all the way into the window, so it really flows into this beautiful garden really nicely. And that's either side here, more upstand, and then just this small section near the back door and the boiler cupboard as well. And again, taking it into the windowsill so you don't need a windowsill. I think it's a really nice touch. So 2,600 for all of that quartz, I think is a really good deal. The next thing to mention is this extractor zone. So you may have seen in the video that we built this from scratch. So this is just stud work that our carpenter has done. Um, the client wanted this as a feature, seen it in a couple of magazines and it's turned out really nicely. So what we did is we built some little cubby holes in there just for showing, we put some cool little LEDs up there just to give it a really subtle light of the night. And I'm just really pleased with how this whole thing has turned out over here. I'll go through all the appliances in one go at the end and everything I got. But one thing I wanted to show you before we carried on is I really like how the lighting has been done. He modestly says as he did it himself. So once you turn those main lights off, this is a really nice sort of nighttime evening setting when you're not cooking and you just want to pop in here or sit in here. So you've got these LEDs behind this bespoke shelving, floating shelving unit my carpenter made with an LED strip back there. So that looks really nice. And then you've got these under counter LEDs that I bought from Tool Station. Um, the extractor lighting and then more under counter lighting as well as these pendants that I got that I bought from John Lewis for £85 which are really nice in the dub grey and the chrome at the top there which goes with this which matches everything in the kitchen and these pendants are called Angle Poise Original 1227 uh, ceiling lights so Angle Poise Original 1227. And I just really like how that lighting looks of an evening. It looks really smart. I'm getting the main lights back on and I'll talk you through all the things we've bought. So I'll start over here. So all of the appliances are either Siemens or Bosch, they're really high quality, um, high end, but then they're going to last a good 20 years. So it's worth it. This induction hob is from Siemens um, and I bought it from a company called Marks Electrical for £448. Above it, again, is this extractor built into this bespoke unit we made. I really like that it pulls out to cover more space and then it hides all your ugly buttons out of the way behind there. I think that's a really nice touch. That cooker hood was 288 pounds. I bought that from Appliances Direct. Coming round to the left, we've got this integrated dishwasher, again from Bosch. The dishwasher was 600 pounds. And then you've got this sink unit, which we couldn't quite get sent to this column, unfortunately, because of the big dishwasher, we'd have to have blanks, it would have looked terrible. So we either had to make it center of the cupboard or center of the column. We went for center of the column because when we tested it, it's not center of the cupboard. It just didn't look right. Um, so that's actually fine. The client wanted it center of the column anyway, rather than some people have it over a window, but we wanted it center of this zone. Um, the sink is from East Coast Kitchens and it's an undermount sink, as you can see, going under here. And it's a one and a half bowl from Range Master and it was £239. The tap is from Plum World and is chrome and matches the rest of the chrome in the kitchen and it's a Briston Beeline sink mixer with pull out nozzle which is this bit yeah it's pretty cool just for cleaning and moving it around. Coming further around to the right We have a microwave oven at the top 
and a conventional oven at the bottom. Both of those things are Siemens, as you can see, and they match really nicely, and they've got the chrome again, and they're both from Marks Electrical. What I like about this kitchen is we've got this integrated fridge here, and it's just a fridge. Because we've got a freezer at the other end, all of this space is just for a fridge, which is really handy. And the fridge is from Bosch, and was just under a thousand pounds, so 999. Again, really high quality item. These radiator covers, they are from Plum World, I believe, and they were £48 each, and they're the white vertical style, and then we've just painted these to match all the doors and the skirting around here, and this architrave, just to give it a nice touch and different colours going around, really like that. Um, in the utility room, we didn't have to buy any of these things, but we have a washing machine and tumble dryer that the client already had but we did retile this whole floor and replaster this whole room as well. Come into this section, we put a new boiler in here. So the plumbing work was about 3,000 pounds for this whole kitchen, which included this huge boiler. The house is quite big, so it had to be a big boiler. And then all the first fix and second fix plumbing work, including this water softener as well um, and a waste disposal under the sink and lots and lots of bits like that and then the last appliance is as i mentioned this is a full height freezer which is really handy gives you loads of room in both and again that's from bosch and from john lewis and that was just under a thousand pounds around 987 pounds the Antico flooring you might have seen from the time lapse. It's a really nice Antico. It's kind of like a laminate, goes down really easily and looks really good. I really like how the grain in it is, is, is really smart. And we've just we've changed everything. So we've renewed the skirting, we've renewed the sockets and switches, all chrome to match. and even details like the architrave and keeping these original doors but just painting them the colour to match the kitchen. Some other things I forgot to mention is what I really like about this kitchen is the end panels. So we went for this tongue and groove finish on the end panels and it just finishes off this breakfast bar so beautifully. You can see it's just got a slight groove to it and I just prefer it to sort of a boring plain end panel especially when you've got all this walk space and you're going to be regularly coming here I think it makes really good sense and we also did the same in the back door which isn't as obvious but again I think it's a really nice touch and goes really well with this back door as well everyone thanks for watching um, if you have any questions about anything i may have missed um, please get in touch and i'll let you know where i got them how much i got them or any questions about the work um, how much people cost for example um, generally the plasterer was about a thousand pounds for this whole space and that utility room in there it was quite a lot he was here for a, a good three or four days uh, two of them um, but uh, the plumbing work again was quite expensive because of the new boiler that was about three thousand pounds but most of that would have been taken up by installing the new boiler doing the radiators things like that and then the carpentry was about two and a half thousand pounds so that was loads the carpenter did so he did all of the kitchen he built this bespoke extractor unit behind me he put all the skirting on did all the radiator covers architraves around these doors so he did an awful lot as well um, and then obviously my electrical cost as well um, which i didn't have to rewire it i just rewired the f there's two cables that come from the fuse board and i rewired it from there so it wasn't too much for electrical costs um, on something like this um, so i hope you've all enjoyed this please get in touch if i've forgotten anything um, i really hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you on the next one cheers